you? Okay, that's not bad. Scare them all off all night cool outfit and stuff. I didn't know how to handle hitting after that. All right, um, so I will try to allow a little bit more time um, with this for questions, because I always feel bad not being able to um, answer. To me, I would do this almost all Q&A just because it is about you guys, and I want to be able to have that dialogue. Um, but I don't think they would appreciate it if I was just like, all right, I have no presentation. You guys, come on, fire it. So, plus I spent time making this whole presentation, so I think you'll appreciate it. Oh, by the way, I love this picture, um, because looking back, I never realized, I mean, I know the bat flexes, but this bat, I still use that bat. Didn't break, but if you notice, I mean, it is flexed all the way back. And I think it's really cool just to think about when you think about that technology and how much the bat can actually flex um, for them to be able to capture that moment. Um, so the photographer that came out to one of our pride games and captured this, and I was like, I have to have this picture. It's just really, it's really cool, cool moment. Okay, um, hitting at any level. Um, the reason is that I feel like there's a lot of basic things, advanced things. Um, I'm going to go over your approach, developing uh, into a power hitter. I mean, every girl I would hope wants to be a power hitter. They want to hit home runs. They want to hit for power. I feel like that's the biggest challenge when you're transitioning and you're growing too as a girl um, and getting older. But transitioning from being the girl that can just loop it over the infielder's head to seriously putting people on their heels. I think that can help happen, you know, even at a young age. You can develop into a power hitter without being your classic, maybe 300 pound power hitter. Um, and that's something that you can be, like this little girl right here, who's so cute that I had to use your picture, um, that you can be that age and be someone that's a serious threat when it comes to power. I mean, maybe not, like, not to keep wild, but you're maybe getting more than just those blue pits. The fallacies. I kind of wanted to go over it because I feel like there's so many things that are said out there that are just like what you say um, that I think, you know, as coaches, you need to always remember, um, I'm stealing this from Sue Inquist, but you are a permanent marker on your players. Everything, you're Sharpie. Everything you say is ingrained. And, and for those of you that play, you'll know that. You'll take things that coaches told you, good and bad, and unfortunately, <coughs> unfortunately, they're forever there. And you'll remember the things that you've been taught, not to get all you know emotional and, and fuzzy with you guys. But I think when it comes to fallacies, be careful what you're saying when it comes to, to hitting terms. I think we get caught in well, that's what my dad told me, and that's what hit you know. Um, and we'll get into those. But be careful what you're saying because they take it literally. And um, just want to make sure you're always emphasizing the correct application, and then the end needs to follow up. Okay, so approach. Um, physical versus mental versus emotional. When you're young, when I first started out, six, seven, eight, nine years old, it's all physical. It's learning the mechanics. It's learning how to hit. You're having fun. As you get older, the, the mental and emotional aspect takes place. And as coaches, that is the part of the game that I feel like is harder to talk about. We talk so much on the mechanics of hitting and how to teach and how to. But at the end of the day, when you're, you're coaching girls, there is a whole other ball game that's involved. And that is mentally making them feel like they are the hitter that you're trying to teach them to be. Emotionally being able to handle different players and how they handle the emotions of playing the game of softball. If you care about the game, which I hope most players do, I know some don't as much these days, but when you care about the game, at the very least you care about being successful. And in this game of the hitter, you fail all the time. So I don't care who you are, you're going to get emotional players. Whether it's emotional, I'm going to chuck my bat off the side of the dugout, or it's emotional, I'm going to cry, or it's emotional, I'm just going to shut down and act like I don't care. There is a part of responsibility as a coach to understand your players and how to reach them. And to be successful, the best coaches I've ever played with knew how to, how to be able to reach the player. So then they can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't know how to make Kristen understand, Susan understand, all of your different players, because it comes with a whole slew of di different mental and emotional aspects, then you'll never be successful as a coach. And I think that's something that 
when you're teaching girls my dad was my coach forever, he was a baseball coach, it was something, he had two daughters who played softball and he had a hard time understanding us. But when he did is when I felt like we started to get better. When we finally started to get on the same page, like dad, you can bring it into my head that I'm pulling my front shoulder, but <laughs> right now you're not pushing me away that I'm not gonna receive anything that you screaming at me is not gonna work. So understanding the, the players you're coaching. Preparation. Um, this is something, obviously, you guys do as coaches, but really getting players to be accountable of preparing. When I mean preparing, I mean it's a whole slew of different ways. Knowing who you're about to play. Uh, a lot of times you might not be able to know anything about them until they take the field about 20 minutes before the game. But as a hitter, there's always a pitcher that's warming up. So get your hitters to watch. What are, what are they looking for? Okay, she's a lefty. All right, she's throwing the ball left-handed. She's throwing a lot of balls in the dirt. And as a pitcher, 20 minutes before the game, those are the pitchers, you know this, the pitch that you work on before you're about to take the circle or go to the circle is your best pitch. That's not the time that you're working on a rise ball you're still kind of trying to sweep. No. If I'm a drop ball pitcher, I am throwing drop ball, drop ball, drop ball, drop ball. Okay, I'm mixing a change up, mixing my rise. Drop ball, drop ball, drop ball. I'm throwing my go-to pitcher up for the game. Perfect. That's what I love even about youth and even in college, the pitchers right there. There's no special bullpen that they can come, you know, and the gates open and they come out to some cool music. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Right there, right across the field, sometimes on the field, just on the side. So get your hitters to understand the more prepared you are, the better you're going to be. Every hitter wants to be successful, and the odds are already against them that they won't be. So try to give them as many advantages and get them to understand, hey, if you want to find ways to be successful, then let's watch this picture. What is she throwing? She's throwing all drop balls, but they're all in the dirt. That's her best pitch. Probably got some good movement. So let's look for something up in the zone. And if she does throw a drop for a strike, let's try to make sure that we're looking for a specific area. Are we looking in? Are we looking out? Let's not just start chasing everything because she's throwing. And this, even if it's 10 minutes before the game, it just gets their mind working. So we're not waiting until at that or two or three to be like, hey guys, she's still in a drop ball. We're all swinging at it. It's not working. Let's start from the beginning. Visualization. Visualizing is everything. I think being able to, when you talk about the mental part of the game, I really believe that you have to feel good to hit good. I have to believe, without sounding cheesy, but I have to really believe I am an awesome hitter to be successful. And nine out of 10 times, it's the opposite. You know, we're, we're, we're waiting for the feedback from our coach or our mom or our dad or our teammate, you know, constantly doubting, am I good enough? Am I good enough to be here? Can I really hit her? And you see it when they're up to bat. I see it all the time. Okay, so we'll strike out, we'll strike out, you know. It's rare that you see a hitter get in that box and it's like, going down, all of them. Yep, I mean, they don't say that out loud, I hope, so it's kind of <laughs> annoying. But that hitter that just has that presence, that gets in that box and is like, you are going to be so sorry if you throw that ball anywhere near the plate. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. I mean, that is something that you see with baseball a ton. I have a guy friend that they play slow pitch softball. They're like, I'm so good. I'm really good. You know? And then you have, you know, even, like, I'll be like, you know, someone asks if you play softball. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I kind of dabble a little bit, you know? It's like, as women, we're taught to be humble. We can't be that person that's like, I'm a Rasa, I'm so good, I can crush the cover off that ball. Quick, give me a ball right now, I'll crush it. And it's like, whoa, hey, easy there. You know? Guy says that, or even if they're a slow pitch guy. Yeah, totally, that makes sense. So trying to teach your hitters to be confident. Visualization is a huge aspect of that. For them to be able to visualize success. So be in the batter's box. If it was, for me, sometimes an outside drop ball, facing Cat Austin, which is throwing me that nasty, like I have 10 foot of fingers drop ball on the outside part of the play. So I like to close my eyes when I'm hitting off of a tee, arm in front toss, practice. I'm picturing that moment. I'm picturing her throwing me. That also means that when I'm hitting off a tee, it's not rapid fire, like 15 balls off the tee in two minutes. 
like cardio hitting. If I'm visualizing her, that left knee, 10 foot fingers, winding up, throwing that ball on the outside part of the plate, crush the ball, knock it off her shins. Sweet, yes. <laughs> that 